Hello everyone, I am Dimitris and today we will talk about the builder design pattern with C++. Specifically, we're going to take a pragmatic approach which is hopefully more relatable and understandable than many of the examples out there. In this video, I will assume that you're somewhat familiar with the pattern, so I will mostly focus on its practical implementation. It's also good if you have some basic understanding of C++. This includes classes, references, and smart pointers. Nothing too much, but we will not spend any time explaining them. Let's start by taking a brief look at the problem this design pattern is trying to solve. The builder pattern is often applied when there is a large number of attributes needed to initialize a class. Specifically, when many or most of these attributes are optional, creating an object may become complex or inconvenient. In such a case, one bad solution would be to have a constructor that takes all possible arguments. However, the larger the number of attributes, the more arguments the constructor needs to take, resulting in an ever-increasing complexity. To make things worse, passing all arguments does not make sense in all usages of an instance. For example, if A, B, C and D are possible attributes of our class, one user may only care about, about attributes B and D, while another user cares only about D. Another inconvenient way to solve this issue is to create multiple constructors which satisfy all the different permutations that users may want. Again, this does not scale very well as the number of attributes grows. A final way to solve this without the builder pattern is to wrap all attributes in another class which has some default values and inject that new class into the class we want to customize. This is not a bad solution and could be totally fine to adopt in several contexts, however it may be less expressive and slightly more inconvenient compared to what you will see soon. The builder pattern aims to resolve these issues by splitting initialization into multiple steps where the last step returns the complete object. This approach also allows for a higher degree of expressiveness compared to constructors taking a large number of arguments. In many examples, you will also see a director class that encapsulates the different build steps altogether. So why am I making this video? To be honest, when I read many of the articles out there about the builder pattern, I found the pattern quite hard to understand. This despite using and implementing it myself many times. My goal is to help you understand the pattern, its applicability and how to reap its benefits. I will be using the simplest possible code in modern C++ and I will show you several very practical ways to implement the pattern. We will start from the simplest builder pattern I can think of, which some may even say it is not really a builder and progress towards a slightly more advanced example that is more object oriented and allows for seamless dependency injection. If you want to read more about the builder pattern to brush up your knowledge, please feel free to pause the video and check out some good reading material I have listed. To focus on the pattern itself, please treat any code you see as pseudocode. It should compile, but I might skip a good practice or two to keep everything on the same slide. I will assume C++20 is being used, however, everything you see should be C++11 compatible. I do not follow any particular coding guidelines, I know there is room for optimization and I don't take any specific domain restrictions into consideration. Before we begin, let's describe the use case. We need to create a library that represents menus in some user interface. 
all menus must have some kind of ID and aside from that they may have other attributes such as a title, a border in pixels, several menu options or an orientation. If an optional attribute is not selected then a default value will be chosen instead. Let's take a look at how we could implement this without the builder pattern first. The first and perhaps the most straightforward way would be a constructor that accepts arguments for all the attributes that need to be initialized. In this particular case where we only have four optional arguments, it's probably not that bad. However, as the number of attributes rises, so do the arguments. Using this approach, we get a constructor that continuously changes with the introduction of new optional attributes and has the potential to become very complicated. Furthermore, there is no way for a user to avoid passing an argument they do not specifically care about. We could, of course, set default values. However, since in C++ we do not have named arguments, this would eventually be inadequate. A way around this would be multiple constructors with all combinations a user would want. This, however, has the potential to explode the more fields are added. So, unless you have a very small number of optional fields, let's say less than three, you should not consider this approach. Finally, you may have setters for each field and the user may call whichever they wish to initialize the respective field. This is fine and is, considering the circumstances, the best alternative to the builder pattern. As far as I am concerned, this approach only lacks the expressiveness and the inability to declare the menu instance as constant. Now, let's see how we would do things using the builder pattern instead. I'll start with this very basic implementation that is so basic that some may not even consider it a builder pattern. We start with a static create method that takes all compulsory arguments and returns a menu instance by invoking the class's private constructor. This way we force our users to use this method for creating an instance. In this particular case, the create method is not very useful, so you could skip it and make the constructor public and use it directly. Its main advantage is that it can hide some potential construction logic and that it may make usage more readable. However, this last one is ultimately a personal preference. Anyway, let's move on with the setter methods which do two things. A set some member variable and b return a reference to the current class. This technique allows us to chain multiple calls for customizing the different attributes as we see fit in each use case. For example, main menu should have a title, two options and should be horizontal, while the bottom menu should have three options, a border of two pixels and so on. Some may say that this is not a proper builder pattern because the user may get a usable menu object before they finish setting the various attributes. While I agree, the goal of applying design patterns is to solve recurring problems and not to introduce new ones, for example complexity, just to follow a textbook example. So, my opinion is that if this implementation fixes the issue of having multiple optional attributes, then by all means go for it. But let's take a look at what a more traditional yet still simple builder pattern would look like. We will need two classes, a builder class and an implementation class. Here I have chosen a menu as the builder class and the nested class impl as the implementation. 
The two classes do not have to be nested. However, you will want the builder class to be declared as a friend of the implementation so that it can access its private members. The idea is that the builder class menu creates an instance of the implementation and sets the various attributes. It will only relinquish the implementation ownership as soon as the user signifies they are done with initializing the instance. This is done here by calling the build method as the last step of the chained call. Let's take a closer look. The input class is the one that would contain many related business logic. In this case, the show and select functions as well as the various fields. On the other hand, the menu class follows this technique we saw before with methods returning a reference to the instance. First, an input instance is created in the menu constructor and then the different member functions customize the respective private fields of the input instance. When the user is done with initialization, then they should call build which would return the fully assembled instance with all the properties correctly set. Note that the input constructor is private to force construction via the builder pattern and this is why we cannot use std make unique when creating a pointer to it. So this is the more traditional implementation of the builder pattern where the user gets access to the built object only after they have finished initializing it. In the end, the usage looks very similar to what we previously saw. The differences are that the build function must be called at the end and that the type of the menu instance is a unique pointer of menu, impl and not menu. Depending on the use case, you may even skip the unique pointer for the return type of the build function. The third way of implementing the builder pattern is essentially the same as the previous one except that all classes now implement an abstract interface. This variant of the pattern is closer to the textbook examples you will find online, especially in other languages. We first start by defining the abstraction for what we have been calling so far implementation. Here we call it menu. It exposes business logic via the show and select functions. Then we create the builder interface. This one exposes the different ways an implementation object can be customized. Similar to before, we also have a build function that returns an instance that implements the interface of your business logic, the menu. The usage is essentially the same as before. However, now you have the possibility to depend on an interface instead of a concrete class. This can allow you to seamlessly switch among different builder and menu implementations or, you know, inject a mock. The implementation looks almost the same as before. I have changed the names a bit to reflect the usage of the abstractions. Now the outer class is called menu builder and implements the builder interface while the nested implementation class is called default menu and implements menu. No other changes have taken place. Please note that returning a unique pointer from the build function in this case is something you will probably not be able to avoid. To summarize, the builder pattern may help your users write simpler and more expressive code when creating objects that have a large number of optional attributes. Keep in mind that your primary driver should be simplicity both for your users but also for yourself as the one implementing a library. Therefore, please avoid over-engineering things Adopt the pattern when it makes sense and apply it in a reasonable way. Until next time!
Take care.